An AIB partner for AMD just accidentally leaked one of their upcoming GPUs, but it's probably not a GPU that's going to get a lot of people excited. Perhaps this may even be AMD's RTX 4060 Ti moment. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. AMD has gotten busy these past few weeks where they are finally releasing new GPUs that will fill out the rest of the RX 7000 lineup. Which, if you were just hoping for new GPUs, I guess this is a positive turn of events. I mean, at one point it seemed like AMD had just gone MIA after releasing the RX 7900 series, but then we saw them release the RX 7600, which, mind you, wasn't anything spectacular, though it was there for the mainstream gamers as an option. And then just recently over in China, they unveiled the RX 7900 GRE. If someone in the comments wants to chime in and let me know why AMD called it the GRE, please let me know because I for one can't figure it out why they called it that instead of just calling it a 7900 and it's kind of driving me up a wall. Now I wanted to make this video as a follow up because we previously talked about the RX 7900 GRE in a previous video of mine and my initial impressions of that GPU weren't really that great and after taking some time to think more about it, my opinion on that card hasn't really changed. In fact, I'd say my outlook is more negative on it. AMD after nearly 3 years are going to be releasing a new GPU which isn't going to be that much cheaper than what the RX 6800 XT launched for and it's barely going to be faster. We saw their own bench benchmarks show some very underwhelming performance which says a lot considering in-house benchmarks are typically cherry-picked results to make the products look as good as possible. Once reviewers get their hands on this GPU, it'll probably be more like 8-10% to faster. Along with that, we also saw benchmarks which showed how it would perform against an RTX 4070. I was watching the Technomics podcast a while ago and I highly recommend you guys get over there and subscribe. Chris and Paul always have some good entertainment streams and provide great insight on the PC hardware space. One thing Chris pointed out which really puts the 7900 GRE and AMD to shame is the fact that AMD needed a cut down Navi 31 die to compete with what is essentially a RTX 4060. We all know that Nvidia this generation shifted their tiers up and the RTX 4070 is really an RTX 4060. So the fact that a cut down Navi 31 die barely edges out a small entry level Ada Lovelace die really says a lot. Unfortunately, it seems like that's not the end of it. Just recently over at Video Cards, they posted an article on their site sourcing a leaker from Twitter named Alda Watts, and they shared a link directly from PowerColor's website that had information pertaining to an unreleased and unannounced RX 7800 XT. This is coming directly from an AIB, so it's not someone just making up information. And yes, they did remove it now, and probably caught an earful for it, or perhaps it was intentional, who knows. But from this leak, we are able to learn the specs of this GPU, which gives us a pretty good idea on where it'll perform. Before that though, on a positive note, I just wanted to say this card actually looks pretty nice. Power color over the last couple of years has stepped up on making some really cool designs. Though it's a shame that it only looks good on the outside and what's under the hood will disappoint. So this is going to be a Navi 32 GPU with 60 compute units, which results in it having 3,840 shaders. So the RX 7900 GRE has 33% more shaders, but apart from that, everything else is the same, except we also don't know how much power this thing will need or what AMD will set it at. I suspect it'll probably have a TDP of around 200, maybe 220 watts if they want to push it. Considering the fact that the RX 7900 GRE has 33% more shaders, and it's around 10% faster compared to the RX 6800 XT, means that AMD's RX 7800 XT is going to be a slower GPU. Guys, if this doesn't further validate how spectacularly AMD messed up with RDNA 3 and also proves that the RX 7900 XTX should have been called an RX 7800 XT, then I'm not sure what else will convince you at this point. Now we see the reason why AMD held off so long and why they decided to jump straight from Navi 31 to Navi 33. It's because both the RX 7800 XT 
and RX 7700 XT when compared to their predecessors are gonna look like an absolute joke. It's also why I said at the start of this video that this could be AMD's RTX 4060 Ti moment, considering this card could end up losing to the RX 6800 XT in various titles. The only thing that will make this card look somewhat more acceptable than the RTX 4060 Ti is that AMD aren't technically charging the same price as the RX 6800 XT, but then again, this isn't even a true RX 6800 XT successor. This is more like an RX 7700, if anything. We know that AMD officially announced the RX 7900 GRE with an MSRP of 649 USD. I could see them pricing the 7800 XT at around $550, with partner models like this power color version here probably costing around another $30 to $50 on top. It's going to be another GPU in the RDNA 3 lineup, which is going to be a tough sell, because right now you can just buy an RX 6800 XT and it'll give you more performance than this card and it'll be cheaper. Or you could just buy an RX 6950 XT at around that $600 mark, and it's offering some really good bang for the buck when compared to the other options that are on the market around its price point. The same mistakes keep being repeated here. You guys know very well at this point what's going to happen. This card is going to be officially announced, AMD will send it out to reviewers who will then crap all over it, showcase this card not improving at all upon the last generation, they'll conclude you probably shouldn't buy it, which will lead to poor initial sales, and then fast forward just 3 or 4 months down the road, you'll find it considerably discounted, probably at the price point it should have launched at. Hardware Unboxed recently just made a video revisiting the RX 7900 XT as it's regularly selling for around $750, and at that price point it makes a lot more sense than its initial MSRP of $899. So you can definitely appreciate a reviewer going back and revisiting a GPU, taking into account current market prices, and then giving their uh, revised thoughts. RDNA 3 has to be the worst GPU architecture AMD has ever released. I know Vega also turned out to be a disappointment, but this is far worse. AMD are releasing GPUs on a new architecture and on a new node, only to offer you the same performance as last gen for the same price as what those cards are going for today. And as I pointed out in my last video, it's not like AMD has some new revolutionary software feature they can market like Nvidia does. They're a complete no-show when it comes to FSR 3. You gotta give credit where credit is due, Nvidia are making strides in software, while on the other hand, AMD aren't really doing anything. The only reason why AMD and Radeon are even relevant in the GPU space is because Nvidia is keeping them alive at this point. Just think about this for a moment, had Nvidia given us a proper generation of graphics cards with a 40 series. Let's say the RTX 4060 was actually delivering 3080 like performance at $300 and the RTX 4070 was 499 and delivered 3090 Ti performance, then the Radeon Technologies group would be out of business. The difference here is that Nvidia purposely gimped their cards and used much smaller dies and memory bus, etc. They don't seem to care, whereas you can't really even say the same thing about AMD. It's like I said guys, the appropriate naming here is RDOA3. If any of you were holding out, just stop and just buy an RX 6800 XT already. Save yourself the time and hassle. Affiliate links are down below. That'll do it for this one, we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.